is Jon Snow as Zora High. With dragons and white walkers returning, many fans wonder if Jon Snow is this legendary hero. As described in the series, the prophecy states, There will come a day after a long summer, when the stars bleed and the cold breath of darkness falls heavy on the world. In this dread hour, a warrior shall draw from the fire a burning sword, and that sword shall be Lightbringer, the red sword of heroes, and he who clasps it shall be Azor Ahai, come again, and the darkness shall flee before him. This prophecy is central to the lore in Westeros, especially among followers of Rulor, the Lord of Light. The prophecy foretells a hero reborn, amid smoke and salt, beneath a bleeding star, and will awaken dragons from stone, while wielding a fiery sword called Lightbringer. This hero will emerge to defeat the others, and bring salvation to the realm. The prophecy of Azor Ahai has been used for several characters. Rhaegar Targaryen believed he or his offspring would fulfill it. Stannis Baratheon, encouraged by Melisandre, attempted to claim the title as well. Daenerys rebirth amid smoke and salt also aligns with the prophecy's elements. Yet, many believe Jon Snow to be the prophesied hero. In a dance with dragons, Jon has vivid dreams of wielding a flaming sword against the others, which evokes Lightbringer, the mythical weapon of Azor Ahai. Jon's lineage also strengthens his candidacy. In a clash of kings, Daenerys has a vision in the House of the Undying, where Rhaegar says, He's the prince that was promised, and his is the Song of Ice and Fire. If he is the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, he embodies ice and fire. Also, according to the Wood Witch, Azor Ahai would be a child through the line of Aerys and Rala, which Jon is. His birth at the Tower of Joy under the bleeding star of Sir Arthur Dane, whose sigil is a falling star, whose sword, Dawn, made of a fallen star, is further evidence tying Jon to this prophecy. As a brother of the Night's Watch, Jon sacrifices love for duty. By warning Castle Black of the wildling threat, Jon indirectly leads to Ygritte's death, mirroring the sorrowful sacrifice Azor Ahai made when he forged Lightbringer. The mutiny at Castle Black furthers these indications. As Jon is stabbed, his wounds begin to smoke in the frigid air. The steward, Bowen Marsh, sheds salty tears as he strikes. Meanwhile, Sir Patrick wears heraldry featuring a blue five-pointed star on a white field. This alludes, once again, to the bleeding star aspect of the prophecy. Although the evidence in itself is hinting towards John, there are characters who believe in him as well. In a dance with dragons, Melisandre, frustrated by her inability to see the identity of the promised hero, confesses, I pray for a glimpse of Azor Ahai, and Rolor shows me only snow. Bloodraven, a former Targaryen and master of both fire and green seer magic, likely also sees Jon Snow as the legendary hero. As the three-eyed raven, he's preparing Bran Stark to access the full extent of green seer powers. Through Bran, Bloodraven might be subtly guiding events to support Jon's rise as a hero knowing that Bran's abilities could be pivotal in aiding Jon's role as Azor Ahai. Another contender for being the prophesied hero is Daenerys Targaryen. Her rebirth occurs in a striking scene, as she walks into Khal Drogo's funeral pyre and emerges unharmed. This event not only symbolizes the rebirth amid smoke and salt, but also includes her waking dragons from stone as her three dragon eggs hatch in the flames. Additionally, Daenerys was born on Dragonstone, an island that is volcanically active and surrounded by seawater, providing more associations with smoke and salt. Just like Jon, Daenerys was descended from the line of Prince Aerys and Princess Rhaella, as she is their daughter. This also makes her connection with the Woods Witch's vision. Adding to this, Ben Arrow, a high priest of Rulor in Volantis, publicly proclaims Daenerys as Azor Ahai reborn. Maester Aemon also becomes convinced that Daenerys is Azor Ahai. Upon learning about her dragons, Aemon realizes that the prophecy's reference to the prince that was promised is gender-neutral in High Valyrian. In a feast for crows, Maester Aemon tells Samuel Tarly, 
No one ever looked for a girl. It was a prince that was promised, not a princess. Rhaegar, I thought, the error crept in from the translation. Dragons are neither male nor female. Daenerys is the one, born amid salt and smoke. The dragons prove it. The next candidate for opposing John is Stannis Baratheon. He's heavily promoted by Melisandre as Azor Ahai, initially appearing to fulfill parts of the prophecy. The Red Priest is believed that his status as Lord of Dragonstone aligned with the prophecy's conditions. She conducted a ritual in which Stannis pulled a glowing sword from a burning statue, proclaiming it as Lightbringer. Melisandre envisioned Stannis leading men into a climactic battle against darkness, seeing him wielding a radiant sword as the hero reborn. In the books, she expresses her conviction, saying, You are he who must stand against the other, the one whose coming was prophesied five thousand years ago. The Red Comet was your herald, you are the prince that was promised, and if you fail, the world fails with you. She interpreted this as a divine mandate from the Lord of Light, which further fueled her beliefs. However, Stannis himself remains reluctant and often questions Melisandre's interpretations. For instance, Stannis tells Davos that he never sought the role nor the throne. She talks of prophecies, a hero reborn in the sea, living dragons hatched from dead stone. She speaks of signs and swears they point to me. I never asked for this, no more than I asked to be king. In a feast for crows, Maester Aemon expresses his scepticism about Stannis's sword. I know that sword. It is wrong. It glows, but it gives off no heat. Stannis has a glamour on his sword, but it is not Lightbringer, no more than he is Azor Ahai. George R. R. Martin used his prophecy to create ambiguity and challenge character beliefs. Prophecies like that of Azor Ahai are famously difficult to interpret. Martin creates situations where characters like Melisandre, Maester Aemon, and even readers are left to interpret vague clues, often leading to misjudgments and doubt. The ambiguity of Azor Ahai's prophecy allows for the idea that different characters could each represent parts of this legendary hero. For example, Daenerys embodies fire, bringing dragons into the world, while Jon Snow's background symbolizes the union of ice and fire. Jon Snow's journey shares many elements of the foretelling, but George R. R. Martin often challenges simple ideas of destiny and heroism. This raises an intriguing question. Does Jon need to be a Zora High to fulfill his role in Westeros, or is his purpose something else?